Hi friends, I am Anmad Krishna. You are watching Anmad Krishna Food Tech channel. I made my videos in the easiest, simplest way to understand the food technologies as well as food science and technology students. Today's our topic is intentionally added chemicals in food. So we will discuss what are the chemicals which are adding intentionally during processing, during formulations, or during treatment, during harvesting, during distribution, in many ways. So we will discuss what are the chemicals which are purposefully, intentionally added. Let us discuss about the E numbers. Uh, most of the food technologists all knows the E numbers. Even nowadays the common man also conscious about the E numbers. But everyone should know the E numbers. What are the ingredients which are added in the food product? Not only the food professionals, the consumer should know that these are the ingredients because some ingredients may be allergic to some persons. So these E numbers are developed by E means European countries. European Economic Communities, EGC, developed these E numbers. Different food additives at different safe levels. So, they have established maximum permissible limits, residual limits for all these E numbers. E numbers are broadly classified into coloring agents, emulsifiers, stabilizers, texturing agents so like that they have categorized the e numbers these e numbers exclusively used in european countries so these e numbers are exclusively used in european countries so in our seafood industry we are using the additives like e450 e451 e452 these are the additives these are the phosphates we are adding in seafood industry mostly sodium diphosphate or polyphosphate or sodium uh, triphosphates like that or something 300 e300 e330 e331 so ascorbic acid the citric acid or something citrate sodium citrate etc these kinds of these are the non phosphates or these are the phosphates which are using in the seafood industry what about INS numbering system? INS means International Numbering System, which is developed by CAC, Codex Elementarius Commission. Codex Elementarius Commission has developed INS numbering system. Based on E numbering system only, they have developed this one. This is broader than this. Many additives they have included in this. Regularly, they are conducting evaluation and they are updating the E numbers in EEC website and INS numbers in Codex Elementaris Commission website. They are reviewing, they are based on the data, based on the scientific data. If any adverse effects are there, if any additives are there, they will remove the additives and they will incorporate the additives. Like that, they are doing the observations also. These Codex Elementaris Commission, these INS numbers they have developed, which is used globally we can use those numbers we can print those numbers in our food but here e450 will reflect various the same additive in the case of ins number only 450 will represent no ins ins is not required only 450 instead of e450 we have to mention 450 so let us discuss about a uh, category of food additives so food additives are categorized into many the first one is the preservatives so preservatives we are using many kinds of preservatives to extend the shelf life of the product and to retain the flavor to retain the texture for example sodium metabisulfates which are extensively used in many industries like seafood industry and agri processing industries and wine manufacturing industries also we will discuss later the first one is preservatives food additives category and the second one is 
nutritional additives so the first one is preservatives and the second one is nutritional additives so nutritional additives like some supplements will add to the food to enrich the food for example calcium nutritional additives so mostly calcium they will add then third one is uh, flavoring agents flavoring agents will add to the food so to enhance the organoleptic quality of the food so to enhance the organoleptic quality means what the taste so whatever the uh, flavor bearing compounds so it will retain the flavor bearing compounds that's why the flavoring agents some additional uh, additives will be added to give the taste of these things and the next one is coloring agents so coloring agents which will give the appearance which will enhance the accessibility of the consumer so that's why the coloring agents is added to the product but the agents whatever the food additives which are which we are using as per the guidelines or as per the current good manufacturing practices we have to use the these food additives or intentionally added chemicals we have to follow the least concentration and less time to minimize the residual level at safe we must follow the gmp guidelines the uses of the food additives safe uses will ensure the healthy of the person if above the levels if the levels are exceeding then it will pose the adverse effects so for example titanium dioxide or for example titanium dioxide in toothpaste so especially in the toothpaste so for giving the coloring or for brightness of the toothpaste titanium dioxide using if the levels are exceeds which causes cancer so like that and for example nitrite and nitrate most of the meat industries i mean most of the hotel industries they want before they want to serve the cooked meat or they want to serve the chicken curries or mutton curries to the consumers so they will add the nitrates or nitrates the below limit is okay if they will add more not as per the guidelines the nitrates will turn to nitrosamines which is carcinogenic nitrates and nitrates extensively used in all hotel industries to give the fresh color means the mutton or chicken or whatever it may be when they will cook it will give the brick red color or red color natural color so to look the fresh freshly butcher mutton or freshly butcher a chicken so they are adding the additives so these are the different additives but the processor the quality control department should ascertain that the food additives whenever we are adding the food additives during processing or whenever we are adding any food additives during harvesting or during distribution who or whatever it may be we have to monitor we have to establish the safe levels of the uses we have to strictly follow the current good manufacturing practices and we have to ascertain by intermittently testing the residual content of the additives for example if we are adding sodium metabisulfate as a preservative in shrimps had on processing shrimps most of the people are using or if you are adding uh, some flavoring agents in some products we have to very cautious we have to check the residuals also if the residue if, if phosphates the treatment we are using the phosphates in seafood industry treatment to treat the shrimps phosphate levels 2% they are adding or 3% or 1.5% 1% we have to ascertain we have to check the residual content of the product based on that we have to set the limits operation limits now let us discuss uh, functions of food additives so the food additives the functions are to increase the shelf life for example if we add sodium diastate or potassium diastate to the baked foods we can extend the shelf life up to 1 week to 10 days so the food additives the functions are it will 
extend the shelf life the first one and the second one is it will enhance the consumer access it will enhance the consumer access if the shrimps after harvest if the shrimps are treated with sodium metabisulfate it will prevent the melanosis uh, if the not only shrimps and some other agricultural uh, foods also uh, melanosis will occur those kinds of agri like and and potato chips are there for example potato chips lays curcuris so the browning will form very rapidly while potato processing what they will do they will treat with sodium metabisulfate so the potato color will be good natural color so by this by such a way we can increase the we can enhance the consumer access so the functions of the food additive food additive should function this way and food additive should reduce the waste and improve the yield of the food for example food additives like polyphosphates triphosphates diphosphates monophosphates as a ascorbic acid some additives like citric acid so like that what will do in the in the especially in the shrimp industry so it will it will bind the water and it will retain the flavor binding binding uh, agents and it will remains the tasting so flavor retention will occur so drip loss it will reduce the drip loss even after cooking also the cook it will reduce the cook loss when you treat the product before freezing or before cooking so it will reduce the cooking loss let us discuss about the preservatives the preservatives are natural preservatives and chemical preservatives so natural preservatives like marination or brining solution if you add the salt content above 5 above 5% to 18% the salt content nacl so microorganisms won't grow such a condition and salt contents are more 18% 5 to 18% salt content more means what will happen the solvent will exhibit high osmotic pressure in that high osmotic pressure so the microbial cells will gets oxidate so this is the natural preservation mechanism this is the old and traditional mechanism by applying the salting brining and the next one is sugar from sugar cane sugar is producing no so sugar also if you add 20% of the sugar more sweet to the solvent solution microorganisms won't grow and the next one is spices spices with the mixture of vegetable oil edible oil so most of the pickles comes under this category most of the pickles means different kinds of spices they will add more concentration in addition to the uh, spices they will also add the oil and edible oil it will act as a preservative protection the shelf life so we can keep at room temperature the pickles either uh, mango pickle or prawn pickle whatever it may be so it will act as a preservative these are the natural preservatives what about chemical preservatives chemical preservatives are many like vinegar potassium diastic acid or paraffin nitrates or nitrates these are all chemical preservatives so chemical preservatives if the level exceeds will get the harmful effect compare with natural preservatives so natural preservatives always advisable but chemical preservatives whenever adding we must be very cautious benzoic acid